it, it's hard uh, it's hard to have a, a good grasp of you know and, and make a fair judgment of everything because I feel that when you get a, a a red card a suspension like that so so early in the game then it conditions a lot of things I felt we started the game well um, there were spells where Pacific were on the ball not not really creating and then um, came the, the goal of uh, an action that we spoke a lot about how uh, this game would be determined in in wide areas and and we knew where the threat was and where the uh, the strengths and and the areas that Pacific likes to use in attack uh, were and they scored a goal um, in inside though that came from inside those areas but afterwards when you're you know you're trying to weather the storm and make sure that you get back into the game you get a red card you before that uh, you get Guti having to come out with a knock and injury and you put in Tony and it happens that Tony you know makes the foul that leads to the card it's uh after that, guys, after that, it's uh, damage control. You're trying to, to get something. Uh, you can see the second goal. You, you get the 2-1, but you know that there's so much time left that it's going to be a, a battle. And I feel that the guys showed that. They showed the fight. They showed uh, that they wanted to not just go through the, the, the rest of the game, but really try to get something out of it. And we, we spoke at halftime. We knew the next goal would have been very important. Uh, we were one goal down. When you go down 3-1, then it's, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard mentally. It's hard for the guys. Um, it's, it's a game where I can't take too much out of the tactical behavior of our team. Um, I could take a lot on the mental disposition and their, their desire to get out of here and try to, to get something out of this game. Um, I just felt at times technically our decision making on the ball, we could have even with 10 men been on the ball a bit longer, a bit, a bit better. Uh, it didn't always happen, but you know what? We have to give credit also to the opposition. Um, when you go down a man, you lack, it's hard for you to press high up on the field. And we started to see those big diagonals isolating um, numerical advantage on in wide areas, and and that's where Pacific was getting majority of their chances. Um, we'll we'll take some things of this game, but we have to we have to understand the context also, and and look more at individual performances than anything else. Ed, you can go ahead. Hey, Philip. Um, maybe uh, uh, just a bigger picture take on the past week. I mean. In game one, you you give up a, a goal late. Uh, you've had uh, you know a snowstorm rob you of a couple training sessions. Uh, Damien's father passed away. Like it hasn't been uh, an easy first week for you guys. Our first eight uh, days of the season. Can you comment on that? Yeah, th these things. Um, these things. We need to. We need to be ready for them. Um, yes, it's hard. But I felt that still the guys were in a good mindset. We we wanted this for for Damien. We wanted this for for the team, and the guys were ready for for the game. So yes, difficult. But you know me, Ed. I look ahead. I don't look back, and I don't like to to make excuses because as as a leader of these guys, if I start finding excuses, then it gives it opens the door for the guys to. To, to react the same way. I believe that every team's gonna pass through a spell um, of, of, of challenges. We're getting ours. Um, you know, I'm counting, we're bleeding bodies right now. Uh, it's, it's crazy uh, uh, when you're, you're two games in, but, um, but we, we know every team's gonna go through this. We're going through this in the first phase of the season. Hopefully, uh, this is going to be one that we'll get through. We need to maximize points at this phase, especially with three road games. And then, uh, you know, just keep fighting, keep pushing, and make sure that the guys are in a, in a good state of mind and understand the context so that they don't get down or low in, um, in a moment like this. Because at the end of the day, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 
with the results of this weekend, you know, teams are still very close to each other. So it would be, it would be crazy to start looking at, at uh, the standings or even the table right now. Just one more for me, if I could. Do you have any kind of update on Diego and, and what happened there? Yeah, Diego felt a pinch on the, the hamstring that had been injured in preseason. Um, so it's frustrating. Uh, we had the same situation with Andy. We had the same situation with Brett Levis. We had the knock of, uh, of, of Raf and just, just wanting to get those bodies back in. Uh, we'll see. We'll assess. I still don't know. Probably only tomorrow on, on Gutierrez, but that looks to be like uh, uh, the first assessment. Thank you. Brandon, you can go ahead. Thanks there, uh, Sam. Hey, Phil. Um, just wanted to ask you, and I know you, you sort of started off the press conference by saying that it's, it's hard to take things away from, from a game like this where you've got an early red card, but just wondering what you made of, of Jacob Carlos's uh, full debut this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, I felt that, again, I have, to, I have to evaluate the player in the context. I felt that he, he worked extremely hard. He, he had glimpses of, of, of quality on the ball. I, I think that he's a player that could grow. He needs games now. He had his first start. Um, for me, his biggest take up right now is uh, his tactical understanding uh, when, when, when to drop, how to play off the other midfielder, um, when to step into pockets to get on the ball, uh, maybe find a way a bit more dynamic and find the game a little bit more. Uh, that's the next, the next level for him. I thought he had good, uh, good moments, but again, it's a player who's in his first professional season. So we need to help him. We need to be there for him. We need to uh, show him um, and, and, and work with him. And I think that he's, he's someone that will grow in the team for sure. And uh, if I can, uh, with the follow-up, I just want to ask a, a very similar question about um, Matteo Di Brienne not making his full professional debut because he did that with, uh, with Ottawa a couple of years back, but making his Valor debut uh, this afternoon with the 20 minutes or so? No, I think he played last game. I think he came in last game. So it was his debut was last week. Uh, that would be my bad. <laughs> um, but just what you made of, of maybe his, uh, of, of getting another 20 minutes here this afternoon. Again, he's a dynamic player. He's a player with very high energy, but he came in at a time where the game was very broken. Um, so it's it's hard to make a you know a full assessment of of, of his performance of the the twenty minutes he was on the field. I think he's a player that's gonna he's gonna need minutes and he's gonna need to manage the highs and the lows that the game have, has because he's a player that is extremely energetic and sometimes too much is not is not good either. So. Um, I think that we, we know where his deficiencies are and we're working with him. Appreciate the answers, Phil, and uh, good luck next week. Thank you very much. Benedict, you can go ahead. Thanks, Sam. Hi, Phil. Um, just wondering what you thought of uh, William Akio in this match. He's pretty involved throughout, especially on your opening goal. Yeah, Willie is, uh, Willie is a funny one um, because, again, he started, he started higher up and then I'm... I, I moved him as a right back, and uh, I think he was he was still he was steady, but it's like I knew there's expectations, and I could say this uh, openly. We 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 speak with Willie, and um, and we were open with him, and we feel that there's still a, another there's still another another level for him. I think he's a player that went into he went to the national team. He traveled and heavy travels when he went to play for South Sudan uh, during our our preseason camp, and I I feel he, he might have arrived a little bit fatigued um, going into a, into a, a training camp earlier in the year with no no real preseason, and then comes is going through our preseason, which which we we were the high load on the players then he goes and plays games with South Sudan travels back is involved right away in the game in Edmonton the week he had arrived so um or the the 10 days before he had arrived I think that now 
it's catching up a little bit to him. That's my feeling. Uh, but he's someone that understands his role in the team, and I'm sure that um, he's gonna he's gonna grow and 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 be better. I, I still think there's another level for him now today. Uh, what he's, he's not a right back, he's never played as a right back, and today he had to do the job, and and I feel that he he coped with it well. I think the three points belong to the team. You know, I think the team um, did enough. I still wanted more. We wanted more from, from the position we were in. They went down to 10 men. Um, you know, we thought we should have controlled the game more. Bustos, yeah, he's got that quality on the ball, right? So happy for him to get the three assists. But um, overall, as a team, we, we want more from, from a game like this. What, uh, what is that more that you're looking for? Be more dominant, be more control. They're down to 10 men, right? And we're up. We're winning, so I didn't think we did that um, well enough today, and we know it as a group, and um, it's something that we're going to continue to work on and, and reflect on. If I may ask, just one more uh, second start for Mason Mavilla at left back. Uh, what do you make of him in a Pacific shirt so far, and now he's fair? Yeah, he's he's fit right in with the group, you know, and that's his personality and that's his character, and um, he, he's a winner. He wants to win. He's got a good mentality to to the game. Um, so he's done done very well, um, and I'm happy for him. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, Martin. Uh, over to you, Sam. Go ahead. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll get started with, I'm not sure what your name is, but C.D. Heensaw iPhone. You can start us off. Hey, James, it's Cleve here. Hey, uh, just how did um, how did you feel the, uh, obviously, when you get an early, uh, you know, a card, uh, a red card so early in the game, uh, that changed the complexion? Uh, obviously, markedly of this game, uh, you know, not so good for them, uh, good for you guys. Uh, just your thoughts on early red cards. And like you said, you wanted the press and uh, and you guys did or you wanted more, but uh, obviously you got enough. We did get enough. I mean, yeah, it changes the game, right? And sometimes a team goes down to 10 men, they can come together and work together and make it difficult. And, you know, credit to Valor, they did, they did make it difficult all the way to the 90th minute. Um, you know, and, and we need to control the game when we're in that situation. As you said, we're up a goal. Um, we need to control the game. So, uh, you know, overall, we're not happy with how we managed it. But, of course, you know, the three points and, and six over the two weekends, um, we'll take that. Uh, just one more. Uh, just uh, Valor was saying uh, you guys attack wide. And uh, and they, they were looking for that, and they couldn't stop. They couldn't stop you guys, regardless. Uh, uh, just the, the way you guys use the entire field on attack, uh, you know, it's just become a hallmark of this club. Yeah, it's how we want to play. You know, it's it's our shape and how we want to attack. And we've got players like Josh Hurd, uh, Kunle Dadaluk, uh, Nate Mavia who wants to get up. Marco Bustos can can go wide or he can come inside, and it creates a lot of problems. Manny Aparicio also gets out there, so. Um, and those are spaces that, that we want to enjoy and we want to attack and you know, credit to those players. They've been doing it and they're causing problems. Thanks, James. Thank you. Brandon, you can go ahead. Thanks there, Sam. Hey, James. Uh, congratulations on the win this afternoon. Just Thank wanted you. you to maybe, you know, dive into to sort of the, the wanting more aspect of, of this game this afternoon. Um, obviously not great to see the own goal, not great to see the penalty given up late. Um, I, just seeing going back to last week with the late uh, late goal that uh, Ashinodi Onsen scored as well. Just is, is there a message to the team on, I guess, what you're expecting in, in some of those late game situations, making sure that the team locks everything down um, as as the clock winds down. Yeah, we need to manage the game. You know, we need to manage the game and, and control the game in those moments. We don't need to put ourselves in those situations and. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit unfair for, for Kunle, who I think has done very well uh, both matches, you know, but it's not on Kunle. It's, um, it's on us. It's on us as a group. It's on us as a team in that moment. We shouldn't be in that situation and we put ourselves in that situation. And so I feel for him, um, you know, and then the late, the late penalty. So um, we need to improve. We need to get better and we need to finish games in more control. You know, it's something that we speak about and we're not there yet. But again, it's early in the season, so. Uh, we'll continue to work on it. And uh, and maybe on a slightly happier note, 
um, seeing Manny get up the field and, and score a header at, you know, his height, I'm sure that he's not got too many of those in his locker, but just, uh, just your thoughts hey, on Joe, Manny this afternoon. Uh, he's been excellent, you know, over two games, he's been excellent. Yeah, I think he's picked up where he left off from last season. And I think he's, he's capable of even more. He's got great potential as a, as a footballer and as a player and his work rate and his engine. And, you know, if you look at the two games, what he's done and, and he's, you know, full credit for, for him to get the goal today. He deserves it. Appreciate the uh, comments, James, and uh, good luck next week. Thank you. Good. I mean, um, we, we have a great team and, and now obviously a little bit of changes with some, some players and obviously in staff as well with James taking over, but, uh, you know, just coming into preseason, he's kind of giving me more of a little free role to, to roam a little bit on that left side and then try to connect the boost us and with the other midfielders. So I'm, I'm happy right now. I'm, I'm playing well and I'm, you know, just enjoying the game again. How, how do you respond to you know, the, the target you have as champions? Uh, you know, clubs are going to come here the champions so I think you know we we're kind of in that mentality where every game is kind of like a, a finals um so you know just one game at a time now we focus on the next one uh and we just take it one day at a, at a time thanks man over to you Sam go ahead thank you uh you can start us off again uh iPhone <laughs> hey uh, uh Manny just your thoughts on uh, Marco and uh you know there's the old saying he's the uh He's the straw that stirs the drink for you guys, and just his assists and his and his ability to distribute the ball to everybody. Yeah, yeah, Marco. You know, we all know he's a great player. Uh, we all know he has that uh, that you know that instinct for for either an assist or a goal or that last ball. Uh, so yeah, you know, we're we're just happy to have him on our side. Uh, I've played against him multiple times, and I'm glad he's on my side now because he he's a game changer. Um, yeah, now we just got to get him maybe uh, getting those goals for himself a little bit more. That's it. Hey, uh, describe your goal, uh, you know, and how it came about and, uh, and you know, just your thoughts on it. Yeah, no, I just, well, honestly, I haven't seen it over, but I, I remember the ball game played out to Bustos and and I just, you know, I, I tried as hard as I could to get him back post. It's uh, Armando, our assistant coach, he's been telling me to get in the box as much as I can and it worked out. Uh, honestly, when I headed it, I thought it was going just wide, but got a lucky bounce off the post in. So just excited for it. Thanks, man. Benedict, you can go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Manny, James just told us that he thinks, you know, there's still more to come from you guys and maybe another level you guys can reach. Uh, how do you think you, you guys keep improving, especially at a next beast game? Yeah, I agree. Um, obviously, you know, you're up to nothing. They get a red card. Uh, Andy Baccaro out, Gutierrez getting injured. Uh, that's when you, you know, you, you smell the blood and you got to go in for the kill. You can't let them back in with an easy goal. Uh, same thing, we're up 3-1, 30 seconds left. We can go to the corner and kill the game off as much as, you know, it's not, it's maybe sometimes it's ugly football. Just, uh, you know, it's, it's something that you got to do to win. And then we give up a cheap penalty. Um, honestly, like I'm not happy with it I, as much as, we won and, and it was a good game and whatever. For me, we, if we want to be that new, that you know, back-to-back -back champions, we can't we can't have these results and, and, and late late goals against and, and cheap goals against and, and not killing teams off when we have the chance. And uh, he missed a lot of last season, but what have you thought of Matthew Baldissimo so far in these in these first couple of games of the season? Yeah, Baldi's you know he's a great midfielder. I think uh, looking back at person in 2019 when he played the full season I think he was probably the best number six in the league so if we can get him back to to play that way and obviously today he showed in the first half uh he can run a game you know he can he can get on the ball and dictate the tempo of the game so it's just good to see him back out there thanks Manny thank you Brandon you can go ahead thanks sir Sam hey Manny uh, congrats on the goal this afternoon congrats on the win this afternoon and uh I know you just touched on um on, on Matt there but just maybe comments on on how the entire midfield unit works for you guys between between you Jamar and and Baldi plus you know Josh and Marco on the wings. Just it looks like a very complete unit that you guys are running out there on the island. Yeah, and I mean we our our first you know thought is kind of not let the other team breathe. <laughs> we uh, we try to dictate the tempo. We try to you know put guys under pressure whenever they they have the ball in there. 
And then from there, we tried to, to, to show what we have as well. Uh, we have quality in the midfield and with Josh and Bustos and even Diaz coming in. Um, so we know when we have the ball, we'll create stuff, but it's just about, you know, making the other team uncomfortable first. Um, you know, you, you have a guy like Jamar who's giving in a lot of tackles and then getting stuck in. Same with Baldi, even myself at times. Uh, Josh as well. <laughs> so, you know, we have a lot of guys who will take it to the other team and then just calm on the ball when we play.